Hey everybody, I'm doing a, another video on this XD500 that I uh, showed you in the uh, lamp timer reset video. But I wanted to show a troubleshooting method that can be very handy if you own a DLP video projector. It only works on DLP, doesn't work on LCD, um, mainly due to what we're going to be checking. A common failure on most DLP projectors is, uh, projectors, there we go, is the color wheel. The color wheel, if you do not know, is a small colored rotating glass disc. This spins at a very high rate, a couple thousand RPM, and the lamp shines through it, and this is synchronized with the DLP chip to give you an image. What'll happen with these, uh, two things. One is you will get dust buildup in the sensor. Let's see if I can line that up a little better. That little black sensor right there. This guy right here. It's a little infrared uh, emitter receiver. In fact, I think I have... I have one. I had some. Eh, I must not. But there's a little. Hey, let's pop this one off. And then you can see it. There's a little infrared transmitter receiver that monitors the position of the color wheel. Let's see if this guy right here. One of those sends out light, the other one picks it up. That light is then reflected off the hub, and then the reflection breaks when that black spot goes past it. So what'll happen is either dust will get in there, and it'll spin, and it won't see that it's spinning, the projector will shut itself down, or dust will get inside the hub, and this won't spin very well. It'll go slow, it'll stutter, maybe speed up and slow down. Some of the symptoms are flashing colors, red and blues being off, that sort of thing. Uh, other times, these will actually explode. Uh, the glue will go bad that holds the segments in, and they'll spin up, and the segments go flying out. More common on older projectors. But one of the symptoms, if this doesn't spin, is that the lamp won't light. When the projector starts up, it turns the fans on, and then it spins up the color wheel. And then it checks to make sure that color wheel is spinning before it ignites the lamp. Because if it ignites the lamp without the color wheel spinning, that lamp could actually melt the glass. So it's kind of a safety thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you all how to see if your color wheel is working. Now, I'm going to warn you, this can be dangerous. If you are not comfortable working in a projector or working around electricity, don't do this. Put your cover back on and PM me for advice on where to take your projector to or just check, you know, find somebody to fix it. But if you're like me and like the other folks who are like me and you want to take a stab at it, it can be done safely. The reason I mention that is because these lamps are powered by high voltage, high current power supplies. The high voltage, high current power supply uh, terminates at a connector that the lamp plugs into, so it's quite easy to keep yourself safe while doing this. But you do need to be aware. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lamp out. This projector works, but we're going to pretend it doesn't. We're going to pretend that the lamp does not start and that the lamp light is flashing. So pop the lamp out. You can see this is uh, an OEM. It's got an old Osram. They actually don't make this bulb anymore. And there's a different bulb they use now that works just fine. But this is where the high voltage, high current feeds into. And that is fed into it from, let's see, let me get this light on here. Down here, you can see it right there. One thing you don't want to do is ever stick a screwdriver in there like I just did. Now, I'll admit, 
it's unplugged. And in fact, before we actually start, I will recommend make sure you unplug it. Now the next thing you need to do is locate the color wheel. You can see it in there, but let me uh, move the camera around so you can get a little bit better shot. And now we get a real good view of the color wheel. That is the uh, colored disc right here. I will uh, let me spin it. Now I don't want to touch the glass, so I'll spin it by the uh, metal hub. So we're going to make sure this is spinning. Now the, what I would recommend is don't use a uh, screwdriver like I did. Get something a little softer. Ideally something like a uh, maybe a Q-tip that would work well. So then what you can do, if I can hold the camera still, is you can reach in, just give the wheel just a little push. And it should be it should be relatively loose. You shouldn't need much force. And if you can get to it, really get to it, try to give it a little push like that so that see if it spins on its own. And it should. In fact, here's that sample wheel again. Let's see if I can do it, I'll do it by hand to be a little easier. See, it should spin on its own. Obviously, the harder you push it, the longer it'll spin, but you shouldn't feel any dragging. You shouldn't feel any grinding. You shouldn't feel any type of debris in there. If so, it means dust got into the bearings. And like I said, I do know this one's okay, but if I were pushing it with the Q-tip and I felt any kind of grinding or sticking, I would then go inside and look at cleaning it or replacing it. So now the next step, after we verify that it is indeed free, by doing this, so we know it's not jammed, all the segments are there because we did rotate it, make sure none of the segments fell out. We're going to turn it on and see that spin up. And there's a special way to do that. Every projector has an interlock switch that keeps you from turning it on with the cover off. In this case, switch is down inside there. You're not really going to be able to see it. But maybe you'll be able to... Well, maybe you can. Let's try turning the projector. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that switch. Hang on. Now that's probably the best we're going to get. You can see the metal tab. You can probably hear that click, and that click tells us that it's being activated. Now here's one out of another projector. They're just little micro switches. And then in this case, I'll orient it the same way, sitting like this, so that when the door goes on, there's a tab that goes past, slides in and pushes that. Can't hear this one as well, but this one's pretty loud. And without that switch hit, it's going to think the door's off. Because so when the door goes on, this tab right here is what activates it. Let's see if we can hear it. So we're going to bypass this mechanically. And in fact, we'll use that same Q-tip. So I'm going to snap the back end off. And then we'll use this. Go in there and hold it. Now you could do it with a screwdriver too and just hold it, but I don't like the idea of sticking metal in there. Wood's non-conductive. You can kind of see the test set up here. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a Q-tip, just something that'll fit in there without damaging it. And now to test it, what we will do, we will carefully, we'll plug in the power Let's make sure we have our standby light right there. Now let's move the projector because as soon as we power it up, we are going to have a lot of power, a lot of electricity at that connector. So we are going to stay clear of this connector. 
nowhere near it. Don't put your fingers near it. Don't put anything metal near it. Don't put a Q-tip near it, nothing. So then, after we know that we're safe and we're ready to go, we will, actually, let me actually make it a light so you guys can see a little better. Now you can see the color wheel because what we're gonna hopefully see, well, hopefully we will see, is we will see this spin. Let's just get it in the center. Now the projector still isn't gonna stay on because it's not gonna detect the lamp running, but this is just a troubleshoot making sure the color wheel is functional. So I'm gonna press power and it should fire up very shortly. There we go. And at this point, it would ignite the lamp. We would hear tick, 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 and it would come on. But since there's no lamp, it's not going to start. So instead, it's going to think it's got a bad lamp. So it'll do this three times. In fact, we'll let it run through that three times. And then it's going to give us a bad lamp warning. Uh, the LEDs will start flashing. But that's okay. Because as I said, this is intentional. And since there's no lamp, it's act actually acting properly. So this is the second attempt. If the lamp were hot and had turned off, this gives the lamp time to cool down so that it can be reignited. These are arc lamps. They're not filament lamps, so they do run differently. Now this last startup should be the last one before it goes into lamp error. And if this was a troubleshooting, we would know at this point that the color wheel is good because we don't hear it making any funny noises or see it moving erratically. We would move to check other things like the lamp, the ballast, that sort of thing. And now it's giving us the flashing power light telling us that the lamp didn't light. So that confirms that the color wheel is functional and that shows you how to make sure your color wheel is running. Take the Q-tip out. That'll shut the projector back down. I'm going to unplug it. And I'm going to put the lamp back in and put it all back together. Get it back to the customer. But you get the idea. If you have any questions about checking your color wheel, again, only for DLP projectors. These are not used in LCD. Uh, troubleshooting an LCD projector for a lamp not starting is a totally different process. This would confirm that either the lamp was a problem or that the ballast or controls were a problem. Maybe a fan, but usually when the color wheel spins up and the fans come on, my first suspect is the lamp. Then we move to everything else. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Uh, if you have any um, repair-related questions not pertaining to this, feel free to PM me. And as usual, do that uh, like, rate, subscribe stuff. Thanks for watching.